It's not even raining. <laughs> After all that. There we go. Here comes a new challenger. Tr the treasurer. Ishigami, you, and backstory? Indeed, we've seen nothing of him. He's got a very L Death Note vibe. Okay. Not allowed. Even though we've never seen you before. <laughs> We're not letting you leave. You're too valuable. Is it for love? If it's because you're in love with Chica, get in line. <laughs> Ishigami wants to survive. It will. How complex are the student council's finances? <laughs> I didn't know it was like a, a business like that. It's a big deal, huh? <laughs> this club. <laughs> this administration. But what do you want? What do you want for your life? Let's hear the reason. Yeah, there's a, there's a big reason that's going to be relevant. Oh, okay. That's a bit more than I expected. Yeah, I heard that's why we have whites of our eyes, so we can see what people are focused on. That's legit. I feel like in some cases probably more than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and flashback. My secret treasured menu must hide it from eyes of others. Who's hiding their expensive cafe habit? Oh, she, he walked in on a plot, that's why. He ruined her, her carefully calculated plot. Yeah, of course she wants to kill him. It's her entire life that he's messing with. <laughs> this is all she does. This is where she puts her energy. He's a threat. He can expose her. He's a liability. And he can't explain everything to him, because then he'll die. I'm getting a 5 or 6% signal that she likes him. It's the eyes, it's it's the coffee, it's the whole thing. <laughs> Legit, that was some pretty good improvisation. You know, she wouldn't be bad at it. <laughs> she might pull it off really well. She's got the strategy down. She's calculating enough. What? No. Ooh, there's jealousy there, that's true. There's a lot of jealousy there, which is unfortunate. He's not totally wrong. Okay, this is very on the nose. <laughs> Comes in with a knife. Drama club, yeah. What kind of plays are they putting on? Did Kaguya write the script? <laughs> and that's all you needed to hear. That's all that matters. Everything is forgiven. Let's be real though. Even if she was a serial killer, he's dating her. He'd make a ton of excuses. Like, she'll change. I can fix her. <laughs> she won't be a serial killer forever. She needs someone to rescue her. And then it'll turn out actually that he's the one who needs rescuing. Because that's always how that goes. Because it turns out she kind of likes being a serial killer. Or at least certain aspects of it. But he's in too deep to go back. Any chance he'll get, he'll get in. He'll date her knowing, or at least suspecting she's a serial killer, and make excuses for it. And unfortunately, that means he's more vulnerable because he's even deeper in, and the only way out is through just absolute willpower and strength, or just sheer disaster. Perhaps a wake-up call is involved. Alright, this is... This is a lot. You need to go home and get some rest. Starting to understand why you don't hang out much. <laughs> Offensive power for the win, once again. Is there anything offensive power can't do? <laughs> Trust your friends, yeah. Trust Kaguya to kill you if she says she will. And only he knows. And he can't tell anyone. Yeah, that agreement for once. <laughs> Total loss. The Women in lo of Love and Hate, I'd watch it. Starring my dating history. <laughs> All of it. Alright, I'm imagining it. Take me on this journey. Ten. Fujiwara Chika wants to test them. Oh, I like this. What does it mean? Tell me about myself. Hey, close to my answer. No. I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> Wait, what? He actually wants to have nine kids? He's asking a lot of his wife, no? Yeah, for sure. There's a really great game that I do on people, or I used to do on people, as like a sort of a drinking thing, or occasionally on dates, called the, the Cube Game. It's a series of questions where you ask people to imagine certain objects, similar to this, and from that, you are supposed to be able to analyze their behavior. The truth is, it's probably not scientific at all, but it kind of doesn't matter. It just creates a really nice space to talk about 
about personality and one's own tastes. It gives you things to reflect on and perhaps allows you to frame things in a different way. I feel similarly with fortune telling. Like, I don't believe people can predict the future at all, but I love getting my fortune read because anything that gives you sort of a concrete backboard against which to throw ideas is probably going to prove useful in some way. And what typically happens, like with fortune telling, is that people will end up telling you who they are based on their reactions to what you say. And so it ends up being fun for both parties because one thing I've learned from doing this is just about everyone really wants to hear about themselves. It makes people happy to have their fortunes read and things like that. But you get a chance to get to know them as well and to sort of have a off-kilter conversation that can be pretty revealing and interesting. I mean, even things that are more scientific, like let's say Myers-Briggs or the Big Five, no system of categorization is going to capture humanity. It's just way too complex. But just to understand the different concepts of, say, extroversion, introversion, and how you derive energy, and to think about intuitive thinking versus sensory thinking or whatever it is, I'm not a Myers-Briggs expert, or to think about leading with thinking or feeling or the ability to plan well or to sort of be more open. All of that is useful to reflect on no matter what. You know, it doesn't matter what your Myers-Briggs letters are. You know, what matters is that you are getting what you need out of life, you know? <laughs> like with everything. And if there's something in there that helps you understand yourself and therefore better navigate life, then it's all worth it. It's all great. I see he is still alive. And still around, for that matter. Seems like he's getting out of his shell a little bit. I was born ready. Which street? It's a tourist asking for directions. Someone I can help. <laughs> oh no! I like tourists, I guess. I was about to say, she's been planning this since middle school? <laughs> Before she even met him. This is insane. She has models of them. She has their locations down. Their postures. And she filmed the whole thing, but you gotta destroy that evidence. This is all highly unnecessary. <laughs> That's cute though. Too bad it's a lie. It's Kaguya trying to kill him. I'm just more impressed by the way he imagines a dark street than anything else. I was picturing a city, like an alleyway, like a dangerous Japanese alleyway. Yeah, keep an open mind, you never know. <laughs> you thought your life was gonna go this way, but then maybe it goes this way. Maybe Miyuki's not the one, you never know. Uh oh, mind games intensify. I love these, uh, these fantasies about her reactions. What about her dog? Oh. Well, he's had his first time with his sister a few times, so... <laughs> I mean, there's a thin line between falling in love and fearing for your life. And thinking someone's gonna murder you. It's all related. You know what's bizarre? I said tourist that I need to help. I met my girlfriend when she was a tourist in New York. Now I'm just doing fortune-telling tricks on myself. <laughs> Convincing myself that it's significant. <laughs> we got a name for our problem. This guy reminds me of, uh, damn, what is his name? Mirio's friend. Swordfish dude. Oh, she's a love detective. You're underestimating her. I'm ready. My heart is ready. Just one. The best one. Keep it simple. Hey, look at that. We're a match made in heaven. Everything just exists for Kakyo's pleasure. <laughs> it's always about people. Everything is about people. A <laughs> bus load. A truck load. No, no. Wow. <laughs> Yikes. Sell it and give it to charity. There you go. Save yourself. Oh. Oops. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. What does this reveal about me? Let's not think about that. Mm-hmm. Random fact about HGH injections, huh? <laughs> Alright. It sounded like she said F yeah. F yeah. Here comes a new new challenger. But this is anime. She's not actually working. She's got a secret, dark secret. But actually it makes you love her. Oh, it's her maid. I forgot. Kukyu wants to be noticed. Don't we all? <laughs> She's not wrong. She even has it on her key tag. I don't think they care that much. It doesn't make that much of a difference. I don't think I've ever noticed a girl's nails. Unless they were super weird. Maybe I do notice. Maybe it just sends me subconscious signals that I'm not aware of. A little modesty rhinestone. That's the edge. 
He's not gonna notice. <laughs> He's not gonna notice at all. And you're setting yourself up for disappointment. These fantasies are just too much. He would never say that. Because he would never notice. <laughs> not even once. This guy's around again. He's making efforts. Secretly. Silently. Does she want him to notice first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do this for you. Look at this! <laughs> Look at this paper! Nope. Oh, what? He noticed? Oh my god, he is, a, he is 10 million times more better than me. <laughs> Oof. Admittedly. Oh. Oh, is that where this is going? Get in line. <laughs> so casually. Not necessarily a compliment. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so dramatic. With the opera music and everything. Gee, this guy's a little hard on himself, huh? She's staring longingly at them. <laughs> at least it's self-honest. Feels nice. It's oddly refreshing. It's kind of sad. He did notice, and he liked them. That's a, totally the wrong takeaway. Oh my god. Well, that's noticing. We've already noticed. <laughs> no, no, that's good. It got through. That was surprisingly endearing and touching. Because it meant a lot to her. I feel like such a jerk. <laughs> This is making me feel bad, and also good at the same time. It's confusing. <laughs> what the heck was that? That was dark. Please don't Doki Doki Literature Club this on me. Well, that was way more touching than it had any right to be. There's a real bittersweetness in that. These simple but unspoken desires that seem so obvious to the individual, but other people just have no way of knowing. I've been in this situation where I felt like if only people just knew how simple it was what I wanted, how great things could be. But of course, I've also been on the other side where there was obviously something I was missing, you know, and when it came up, it felt so obvious, but there was no way I could have gotten to it on my own. And there's such a big emotional drama in there because there's this potential amazing payoff possible, and then also so there's just incredible sadness and pain and also this kind of spiraling where it's like, what is it even all for? I guess I'm just worthless, you know, I get that. It's really difficult and I struggle with this too, but I think it's important to, in the absence of evidence, just to assume the best or at least not to assume the worst. People just have their, their own things going on, you know, most, most people are focused on themselves. Miyuki's thinking about his hair or something and he's thinking about some other thing that he wants Kaguya to do. And so it's amazing he noticed that all. And that's just basically how people exist in their daily lives. It's just everyone is sort of trying to navigate a really complex world and complex relationships. Often the ill intent or the disregard that we imagine is not really there. This is actually a really great example, I think, and her spiraling felt real. And to her, I'm sure it felt like absolute fact, right? Like if he doesn't notice my nails, it's because he's not interested. Because anybody who was interested would notice nails and then comment on nails. But if she only knew the truth that we know, which is that he actually noticed her nails and regardless of her nails loves her, but feels that way so intensely he's too afraid to speak. If she knew that, it would flip her world in that moment upside down. So I think there's something really useful by looking at that moment. You know, the things that are the most devastating sort of come with an assumption of reality and sometimes that reality is there you know sometimes it's based on real truth and that sucks but a lot of times it doesn't a lot of times it's just our own filtering of things through a, a mechanism that's already faulty and wired to be fearful and therefore to jump to the most extreme negative conclusions but that's part of why it makes it so sweet that he shows up on his bike not only be for her but because of, it's a show of courage from him which feels really great one thing that's come up for me again and again in these shows is there's something about honesty that just feels good it just feels different even if it's honestly speaking about something that's bad just the reflection, just the ability to let let it in, you know, let the truth in, even if only to oneself, is such a powerful thing to watch, even though it's in incredibly difficult to do in real life.